Hi, I'm Amber Cook. Welcome to my podcast, The Dragonfly Connection. Join me every week for open, honest, and real conversations about courage, transformation, and resilience to inspire and empower you to live your best life. This podcast is sponsored by HealingWays.com, helping you on your wellness journey. Visit HealingWays, that's Healing, W-A-Z-E dot com to find verified wellness professionals and holistic health resources. Do you seem more sensitive than most people or have been accused of being too sensitive most of your life? Or maybe you just want to know how to communicate more effectively with the highly sensitive people in your life. Then, my friend, this episode is definitely for you. My guest Tammy Gowen and I chat about the traits of highly sensitive people, or HSPs, our challenges, and our superpowers. And she gives a ton of great advice on how we can thrive in this world that seems like it's just not meant for us. Tammy is a self-love and happiness coach for us highly sensitive peeps. As an HSP, she knows firsthand what it's like to feel misunderstood, unaccepted, overwhelmed, and needing to be quote-unquote fixed. She's felt the shame and struggled in relationships herself and has felt totally incapable of dealing with what seems like atrocities that we're witnessing in life and even experiencing. And in spite of it all, she has learned how to thrive, how to love herself, and embrace and enjoy her sensitivities and all that life has to offer. Using her degree in counseling, psychology, her certifications in EFT or tapping, heart math meditations, and other meditation and mindfulness practices and energy healing techniques, she helps others do the same. I already feel more empowered and understood after chatting with her. I hope you get the same feeling from listening in. And when you're done, check out the link in the show notes. Tammy has a ton of great offers and even free resources available on her website. She even has a guide for highly sensitive to communicate with non-HSPs. And as with most of my podcast guests, Tammy is available to connect with personally in my Facebook group, The Dragonfly Connection. Hop on in and tag her in a question or a comment. It's a totally free group, totally open to everybody. So if you know someone that you think might need the support and the encouragement, make sure to invite them. And if you're not already a part of it, the link to join is in the show notes too. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did. Let's do this. All right. right. Tammy, Tammy Goen, thank you for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm very happy to be here. I'm excited to be able to chat for a while. Me too. And I have been curious about you since I first, since you first came on my radar. So uh, this is really fun for me because I've never actually talked to you. I've just seen you on social media. Um, Your business is Life Escape Wellness. Yes. The first question I want to ask is, how did you come up with that name for your business? Uh, Well, I consider myself a holistic coach and practitioner, not just coach, but I, Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I just take things from so many different you know, experiences and places in my life. And I see my work that way that I want to help people not just, you know, fine tune one little spot in their life, but create a shift that encompasses, you know, everything going forward. So to me, that's kind of, I I did a lot of brainstorming (laughs) on the name. I'm like, what about this name? I liked wellness. I like that idea. And I'm like, well, maybe this is too long, but it kind of gives an idea of what what's going on. But yeah, for me, it's kind of like, I mean, you have landscaping or you have, you know, skyscapes or you have all these. I'm like, yeah, but there's, you know, like a lifescape, like looking at that great view, you know, of the totality of of what life is. And so I like to be part of helping people shift and and create that new lifescape. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's a perfect name, because when I read it, I do think of that, like the totality. So nice. Good job. <laughs> um, so I always like to ask my guests, where are you in the world? I'm in Central Oregon, uh, just outside of Sun River. Oh, so okay. we West Coast, you know, in the country, but on the east side of all the mountains. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'm um, a little outside of Portland, so we're not too far oh, yeah. away from each other. And I grew up in Aloha, outside of Portland. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm in Tualatin. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. <laughs> and... We love going to Central Oregon. It's one of my fa- my husband's favorite places to uh, go mountain biking. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Very popular here. <laughs> it is. It is. Hey, so I read in your bio, and this was not a surprise to me, that you're a nature lover, which most of us in Oregon are. <laughs> Do you have any fun nature plans this summer? 
Uh, well, I'm getting ready next month uh, to, as a personal retreat slash vacation thing. I'm going to Sedona. Mm. So I will be doing a conference, but I'm also going to be you know hiking because that's my my main thing when I get outdoors is, is hiking. So I will definitely be including that. Yeah. And then using our, our new permit system to get as many ac- much access to the the local uh, trails as I can. I just hike, you know, anytime that I can. So, mm-hmm. but that and kayaking and camping, just about <laughs> anything that'll take me outside. But I'm really fortunate. I live on an acre of trees surrounded by others like that and walk, yeah. I walk to the river every day. So I, I surround myself with that, you know, ongoing. I look at trees constantly out the window. So all of that really keeps me fed, um, even if I'm not like taking a trip or mm-hmm. you know, traveling anywhere. But yeah, so grounding. Yes. So grounding. I'm very jealous. <laughs> and I'm jealous you're going to Sedona. Have you been before? I have. Um, I, again, for like a personal retreat, but just one-on-one, this is an actual conference and um, bringing a friend to, you know, enjoy the whole thing too. So it'll be a little bit different, but yeah, it's magical there. It's, oh, yeah. It's just oh, lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's major healing energy in that area. Yes. Sure. Hey, so, but before this, I... Um, <laughs> did listen a little bit. I didn't finish the podcast, but you were a guest on a podcast called Raising a Powerful Girl Mm -hmm. podcast. And your episode is the gifts of highly sensitive people. And in that, um, in your intro there at the beginning of that podcast, when the host was talking about you, she said that you said that as a child, you felt very out of place. Yes. And so I want you to tell my guests and me to what that meant. Like, why kind of elaborate what made you feel out of place as a child? And, you know, it's funny, as you say that my whole body like started tingling, you know, oh. as I kind of start remembering and then realizing where I'm at now comparatively and which is such an amazing thing. But yeah, for me, um, I mean, at the hardest thing, I think I had a very supportive family. So that was really, really important. Um, n- not so much like specifically being aware of sensitivity, but in spite of, or, you know, I was just seen as kind of quirky, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, with that sensitivity, but, but it was always an okay thing, but in the social realm or school or, you know, out in the world that didn't seem like that. Uh, and for me, it was kind of like, every time I would have a, a hard time with something, I would get this response, you know, if I said something about it, I would get this response, like, you know, what, what's the big deal? What, why is, it's that's nothing let it go or you know i mean i just always got this like invalidating feeling of okay i'm i I mean i obviously knew i was very sensitive but it's but but all of that made sense that was normal for me Mm -hmm. you know how how it seemed weird that other people weren't seeing these things you know i mean i I remember one per one person on a on the school bus one day turning around and going tammy go and you are such a worry wart (laughs) and i thought well why are you not worrying about this you know (laughs) So it was constantly like that. It was like, oh, should I say something? Should I not? Because they're going to be looking at me like I'm weird because I'm, you know, I mean, if I'd been a boy, it probably would have been that much worse. I'd been like weak or, you know, like a girly or whatever. But as a girl, eh, it wasn't as bad, but it was still like, you know, suck it up. What, (laughs) what is, what is your problem? So that was probably the hardest for me. Mm -hmm. And then not knowing until later, everything about energy, I was always very affected by energy and could, um, like, I don't know if there's time for a story, but one of my favorite yeah, stories is stories. when I was 15, um, I was at home and we must have had a, a family event or something because both of my grandmothers were there uh, and my mom. And I don't know where my, even my sister was, but um, but we were all just kind of hanging out and like, oh, I'm going to go back in my room and I'll come back out later. So I leave and I walk and I as soon as I walk in the doorway, I didn't even get through the whole doorway into my room. I just stopped and I, was, I knew like something's off something's something's different this is weird and then i just kind of scanned everything through my through my room everything seemed totally fine but i just kind of sat with it and i'm like what is going on (laughs) and then i looked over i had a stereo cabinet because music huge thing for me so i had this cabinet with my stereo and i had just a few little knickknacks you know on either side and i look over and i almost laughed thinking how ridiculous i was even with myself (laughs) But I noticed that so two of my figurines were reversed from where they normally are because I wanted everything just right. And, and I would clean and I'd leave them in the same spot, you know, and I thought, oh, that's weird. 
why, why would those? And I, I know I didn't do that because I always put them in the same spot. Mm-hmm. And my sister never was one to mess with my stuff or, you know, so I just sat there and got, well, it's no big deal. Just let it go. Right. So, so things are in a different place. That's so, yeah. <laughs> but I, you know, I just couldn't let it go. Couldn't let it go. I'm like, ah, oh, okay. So I had to just go say something to my mom, just, you know, maybe, I don't know what, what, what it could have been, but So I walked back into the room and the second that I walked in the room, dead silence. And they're all just staring at me (laughs) like, okay. And my mom just busts up. Well, no, actually she, she says, what's up, Tim? And I said, well, I know this is really weird, but, and I explained the whole situation. Mm -hmm. And then all of them just busted out laughing. And I'm standing there going, okay, yeah, this is nice. You know, <laughs> I'm the weirdo. Right. Um, so my mom had been talking with them before I had come in before saying how sensitive I was and how I noticed everything and I could pay attention to everything. And they're like, oh, it can't be that, you know, that much. Oh yeah. So it was a test. Mm-hmm. She had gone in there and reversed these, just these two little things, knowing that I would know it somehow, you know, and it was this test for her to show like, see, so of course, I mean, it wasn't so much that it was a hurtful act or anything. It was all in good, you know, good faith, but, mm-hmm. um, but it was more one of those things. I was like, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah I really notice things a lot and sometimes that's okay. And sometimes that seems like a really weird thing to people. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I just had an aha. Oh yeah. Because I, so I identify as highly sensitive empath, all the things where, and I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but I have never, I don't think I've really ever realized that the, my ability to notice every little detail about things, which for the most part works in my benefit, but sometimes is really annoying, especially when you're married to a normal (laughs) person that doesn't (laughs) see everything. Yeah, I'm nor we're normal too, as highly sensitive people. I don't mean it by that, but you know, someone who doesn't notice everything, it can be a little frustrating. Yes. I never put that that together because I do, I notice every little detail about stuff Mm -hmm. and And everything's important to us. So some of those little details do become important. So when other people don't notice them, that's frustrating for us, right? Yes. (laughs) Because you're like, what, how could you not notice that? Yeah. I never even would have thought of that. Or how did you even, how did you even see that? I'm like, well, it's just right there. I don't know, (laughs) you know? And then sometimes it's like, well, you just want them to to see it too. And you know, you can't make that happen. So it's, it's both sides, you know, being understood, but also understanding that other people come from a different place and they, they can't, you know, you you just can't go to each place. (laughs) You can't understand each other, like experiencing it. You can just have empathy and um, support people and say, Oh, okay. Tell me what that's like, but not really go there or be there with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so I just want to dive into one of the questions I was going to ask maybe a little bit later on kind of along this line is there are some really great blessings to being a highly sensitive person or HSP, but things like this can sometimes feel like a struggle or even a curse. Right. (laughs) Right. I hear that a lot. (laughs) Can you you tell me just how to not be sensitive anymore? Because it's just too difficult. Yeah. So yeah, there's not besides, an off switch. <laughs> no, there's not. And we're going to talk about how we can use those sensitivities to, you know, enhance our lives. But right. what are some of the other traits that we tend to have that sometimes can just not feel that great or annoy other people? <laughs> well, you know, because we process things deeply, mm-hmm. it takes us longer often to process because it, you know, this is one of the things that I work with people too on and myself is that, you know, we can have a tendency to just have a split, you know, like a knee jerk reaction to something just yeah. so that it's there. And then we'll regret it later because we didn't think through it. Right. Oh, yeah. But normally if we're honoring our, our needs and the way we need to do that, it takes us longer to process things and people get really f- impatient or frustrated and sometimes it's it's comical because, you know, you talk with someone three days later and you're like, oh, you know what? I've been thinking about blah, blah, blah. and they're like, uh, that was days ago. Yes. <laughs> you're like, yeah, but I've I've kindly, fi- you know, finally figured out exactly what I think about that or what, you know, what that the impact, is, et cetera. So, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes that can be frustrating if if people are expecting more from us, then we feel like, you know, like, oh, we have to jump in and just say something so they'll be happy. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's definitely a challenge. And then I would say, you know, emotionality, just being 
having a reaction to so many things that other people let go mm-hmm. um, and, and not having that camaraderie unless we're with another highly sensitive person who's like, Oh, totally. You know, um, it, it, you're with someone who's not, and they're like, would you just let that go? Or why are we talking about this again? Or, you know, something like that where we're, we're still processing and it's very emotional and it's important to us mm-hmm. and it's not always to other people. So I think that that tends to be, you know, a big, big factor. Yeah. And then there's a lot of, um, self-doubt and second guessing Mm -hmm. when other people don't react or say the same thing or, or whatever. And we think, Hmm, okay. If I, if I say something, this could happen. Or if I, if I hold on to this and, and want resolution, it it might not go the right way. Or, I mean, you know, we just can be like, man, maybe I shouldn't, all those shoulds come in Mm -hmm. and deal with it shouldn't and then even worse maybe i shouldn't even feel this way yes and that's, that's right. shame right? yes and guilt yes. And, and feeling wrong mm-hmm. i mean that's the big thing right when, especially before be, discovering the trait that like oh i know i mean everyone that's highly sensitive knows that they're highly sensitive they just yeah. don't necessarily realize until they learn about it in you know certain ways that this is a trait that all these other people experience too so it's not just Oh, I'm not just being, you know, unreasonable, weird. I'm not wrong. I'm not the only person that's like this, you know, a huge outlier. I mean, you know, with 20%, that's, you know, that's not, not average or not the 80%, but it's not like 1% or, you know, it's not super, super outlying. So all of those things are definitely helpful. Yeah. So it's only 20% of the population identifies as highly sensitive. Yeah. And, you know, some of the more recent research is suggesting that maybe that's a little higher. And a lot of people I talk with say, yeah, I think the way things are in the world these days and, you know, cosmically, whatever that, that, you know, maybe that has actually, you know, increased just with the way things are, are shifting and such, but yeah, but yeah, it's about, which is, you know, why it's in some ways easier to understand this like, Oh yeah, the world is not geared for highly sensitive people. Yes. <laughs> it's really geared for, you know, lots, lots, just big, right? It's just Mm -hmm. a big life. You know, you do things as much as you can, you pack in as much as you can in a day and you go as fast as you can. And it's all about success and, and doing all these things and not, not paying attention to your feelings and not paying attention to all of the things that really resonate. If, if the end goal is, and you have to have an end goal, you have to let, you know, it's like, I mean, all that stuff. And we're like, okay, I'm exhausted now. Yes. (laughs) You know? Yeah. Just hearing you say that, I'm like, (laughs) I know me too. I'm like, bring it in, Tammy. <laughs> Deep breathing now. Right. What What is the difference? You know, because so, some people aren't necessarily highly sensitive. They are just a little bit, you know, more sensitive, but mm-hmm. but still not to the level that those of us who are the twenty percent or whatever. Because, I mean, emotions are normal. All emotions are normal. And we all have some sort of sensitivity, I would hope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, thankfully. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because it's a huge spectrum, right? I mean, even within the 20% that would identify as highly sensitive, you know, you take mm-hmm. the inventory and you're like, oh, that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. And, on, you know, however many you score. Even within yeah. that, there's a spectrum of, you know, like, yeah, every single one on there. And they're all really intense too. Well, yeah, most, more than not, but even these things I can let go. And, you know, so there's just a huge range, but then, yeah, I mean, even within, you know, so we have the, the high spectrum of those that would consider themselves or feel, you know, highly sensitive. Mm -hmm. And then there's still all the way down to, you know, sociopath or somebody that's not going to have like any sensitivity. So there's a, a range in between there. And there can be a lot of people who maybe they're super sensitive about or in like two particular arenas you know oh, okay. uh, but then everything else is you know average or you know not highly sensitive like oh yeah that doesn't bother me that doesn't bother me you know, so maybe someone can take an inventory for high sensitivity and only score say four mm-hmm. out of 20 well depending on which one you do so that like say four out of 24 and you'd be like okay they don't identify as highly sensitive but maybe those four are really intense for them mm-hmm. so they can have those experiences of you know what a highly sensitive person you know goes through yeah. But we just tend to have that as a global life experience. Mm. You know, it's and even but like I have one of my dear friends that is also highly sensitive. Thankfully, I have a circle of, of many of them mm-hmm. um, 
she doesn't have the towards people towards each yes, other. Yes, it's so nice. Well, and I think though, once you once you accept and are aware of it and honor it, mm-hmm. then that happens. Otherwise, yeah. we can pull in all the all the wrong ones to push our buttons and all that. But but it, um, she doesn't have the the sound mm-hmm. sensitivity at all. I mean, she doesn't even notice a lot of things. And mm. partially, I don't have children, so I think well, maybe part of, part of it's just having raised kids for one thing. There's definitely more going on. Yeah. Um, but for her, it's just like we'll hike, and she'll have a she has this big wad of keys for some reason and she'll have it hanging on the you know the corner of her pack or something and ka-ching 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 you know with every step and i'll stop and go can we put that you know in your backpack and she's like oh i'm sorry i didn't even i didn't even notice i didn't even think about it so i mean there are things that we just you know we're unique even within that sensitivity realm um so yeah it's it's kind of all over the board in terms of everyone has some kind of sensitivity but yeah. you can definitely be more or less or a combination or one thing. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of people, when they, when they hear the term highly sensitive, we immediately go to emotional sensitivity, but mm-hmm. you're right. It is, it, it is all kinds of different things. I'm going to ask you in a minute here or a few seconds, um, you know, some examples of other things, not just emotional, but for me personally, yeah, sound is a big one for me. Like listening to people chew, <laughs> it will drive me crazy. I my hear you. The same way. Yeah. My daughter is the same way. And like, oh, it's just terrible. And I feel bad for the people I'm with. It's not their fault. Right. I'm just so sensitive to every noise, but that my brother-in-law me- is the noisiest chewer I've ever heard. And his mouth is closed. Right. Oh, yeah. My husband, okay. too. I just... How can you make that much noise when your mouth is closed? That's amazing <laughs> and annoying yeah. to me. But, you know, yeah, he's not bad. Yeah, no. Um, and there. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways. And for me personally, like physically, I'm super sensitive to, you know, things that go on my body. I mean, mm-hmm. just anything. In fact, I'm dealing with, you know, a medication now where I feel like I'm driving my poor naturopath crazy because it's something new. It's something synthetic, which normally I stay Mm -hmm. away from, but she wanted me to try it and it's doing all kinds of wacky things to my body. And like, I'm sorry this happens. And you know, I'm sorry. I just said it. Like I say that a lot sometimes about my sensitivity. Yeah. Um, Cause I think, you know, we're kind of trained to be like, it's, it's not your fault. It's my fault. It's me. Right. It's not and we don't want anyone else to feel uncomfortable or yeah. feel like, oh, you're doing your job and it didn't work. You know, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, yes. you know, can I change that? But you're like, what? No, wait a second. <laughs> That's just the way it is. It is. I mean, yeah, growing up, I would, I mean, you know, once I became an adult and was mm-hmm. doing my own thing, but you know, well, even as a kid, but if I would work with certain practitioners, I heard often, oh, well, that can't happen. Yes. Oh my gosh. I hear that all the time. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, well, yeah. Would I, would I pay to spend your time and mine and, and lie or make something up? I'm like, what do you mean? It can't happen, <laughs> you know? Yes. So, but we do have that tendency like, oh yeah, maybe I'm just, I'm just weird. I'm just silly. Let me, never mind. Um, yes. So that's important to, to move past that for sure. And just say, Hey, this is the way I'm wired. This is the way my body is. Cause not all highly sensitives have that. Okay. Um, and actually, cause you were kind of alluding to that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Natasha Falahi. No. Uh, I did a training with her recently that, so she talks about six sensitivity types. Okay. Um, and so, you know, physical, environmental mm-hmm. is definitely, you know, w- one of those, but then we have, you know, emotional and mental and chemical and social I might've missed one. There's six, but you know I mean? So we can all, when we d- we tend to have strengths and weaknesses within them all. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and some of us, like maybe four or five of those are like, Oh, those are my big, my big things, po- you know, positive and challenging mm-hmm. both. And then other ones be like, nah, you know, it's bad, but I'm like you. I mean, I can't, I can't have tags in my clothes. I have one little hair across my face. And I'm like, sorry, I can't pay attention. Hold on. Oh my God. Get that moved and go, yes. okay, now I can focus. I mean, I just like anything touching me, you know, and then creams and stuff like that, where you're like, how can you react to that? Well, I don't know, but but I do. Yeah. <laughs> so my body is very sensitive. And like anything that I ingest, you know, I always start with a half a dose. Same. And then maybe move up because I, you know, my whole body is very sensitive in- externally, internally. Um, and not everyone has that, but it's definitely. There's the, those of two it. of us that are extra blessed. <laughs> yes, exactly. 
like, oh, here, take this. Oh, let me think about that for a minute. Let me see what's in the base. Let me see what's, you know, whatever. It has to be a very specific brand. It has to, you know. Yeah. You know, and I'll, and I like to flip the script a little bit and, and say like that those type of things are a benefit. For one, I save myself money because I usually only have to use half of something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if I'm getting some kind of treatment like energy work or, you know, you're you do EFT tapping, so I'll use that as an mm-hmm. example. You know, I am just susceptible to like yeah. instant transfer <laughs> not literally instant transformation, but things just affect me quicker too. So mm-hmm. I take that as a gift. And I see yes. that as one of the gifts. So um, that's the question I want to ask is, how does knowing that you are a highly sensitive person benefit you? Hmm. Us? All of that's us, a great question. Listening? Yeah. yeah. So for me, um, I think the one of the very first things, like if, if you're like, oh, well, this sounds kind of like me. I don't know. I don't know. Um, or if you think of somebody else who might be like, well, maybe this is finding an inventory and there's a bunch of them online. Um, there's some on my link tree. You can actually just collect directly too. But oh, um, but just just taking something like that mm-hmm. is so, so validating because it's not just that, you know, uh, oh, there's other people yeah. or they wouldn't have an inventory, right? It's not just me. But when you see it in in written form, Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the specific things that it asks you, it's validating in that, like, wow, that's my experience. And that means lots of other people have that experience or it wouldn't be on this inventory. And it, it means something. Yeah. Right. And, and then you can look back at everything that's happened up, up until that point and go, that's why, (laughs) And I mean, you just go, 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 go. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why that person said that. Or that's why when that happens, I feel this way. Or this is, you know, whatever. It's like, oh, and things just like, you know, click. And you yeah. just realize, okay, there's a reason for all of this. And then as you learn more and more about it and you get to that place of not only acknowledging, but honoring, mm-hmm. you know, where you're at, that's yeah. that's the big the big piece because we can say, oh yeah, that's that's me. And how, you know, how unfortunate and, and look at all the ways that I'm a pain in the butt to somebody. And, you know, you can stay in that place or you can say, oh, okay, that's me. I'm wired that way. Just like someone's Mm left-handed. I'm not, but someone is, would, you know, would you expect them to change just because, you know, you're, you're going to lunch and and they're kind of cramped, you know, you would say, oh, well here, just, just, well, here, let's switch seats with me and you can have more room with on the outside or whatever. Uh Right. Uh, I mean, it, we just would do that naturally, but with highly sensitives, you know, we tend to think like, oh, I better, you know, don't, don't say anything that I need, you know, extra support or that I need to, you know, it, you just like think that that's maybe something where you shouldn't go. But once you get to realize and go, it's, it, this isn't a bad thing. It just is. It's the way I am. So how do I, how do I get my needs met? How do I feel honored? And that has to start with, you know, honoring yourself yeah. by, by saying, yeah, this is me. And then you can say, okay, this is me and it's okay. And let's see now how it can be a good thing. Yes. Yeah. So empowering. Yes. Yeah. Because there's a lot of good. Go it ahead. is. And there's one of the things that, you know, people don't realize sometimes is all the positive things. Mm-hmm. If we use that term, which is usually the stuff that people like about us. Yep. That is a reflection of our sensitivity. We don't necessarily know that until we come, become aware that it's a trait. Yeah. And that those are distinct for highly sensitives. We can just assume, oh, well, everybody's that way. No, <laughs> or everybody would say that or do that or, or whatever. Not the case, mm-hmm. you know? So though a lot of those things are just assumed as like, oh, those aren't like a, a gift or a skill, you know, surely everybody does that. Right. Which is definitely not the case. So acknowledging that is, is important too. I think that's part of that self-honoring process. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, wow, these all these things that I do that everyone takes for granted and that I take for granted, yeah, are part of my sensitivity journey, and I can honor those specifically by saying, "Yeah, I'm highly sensitive," and look at what it does for me love and for you. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love you're just you are lit up when you're talking about this piece of it. What yeah. are some of those traits that many of us have mm-hmm. that people love about us? Let's so one of the everybody up listening, right? <laughs> One of the most obvious, like you already mentioned, was like attention to detail. Yeah. So for ourselves, we, I mean, I 
I um, contributed to a book recently um, called Evolving on Purpose. And so we just kind of, everyone tells their story. And so I was explaining this in my stories that I, I feel like it, it lets us live in technicolor, basically. Like we notice things that people don't notice and, and they are very enriching. So if you think about all the stuff that you notice, that's beautiful, you know, the art and nature and all that kind of stuff. There's so many people that just don't notice it to the near, nearly to the extent that we do. And so they just go out, they do their thing, they come back and you're going, oh, did you notice this? And did you see this? And wasn't this great? You know, and everyone's like, oh, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess that sunset was pretty cool. And, you know, you're having this major like <laughs> emotional yeah. experience to it, right? So it can be very um, enriching, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, but it can also be like a, a safety valve, you know, where the canaries in the coal mine. So we might notice something that needs to be taken care of right away that nobody else would have noticed that mm-hmm. saves a situation that can happen. Um, So, you know, that detail stuff and that can help us be really good employees or business owners or bosses or whatever. If we, if we do notice all those details, Mm -hmm. that can be very, you know, helpful. Yeah. Um, But we also tend to have a very high level of compassion. Mm -hmm. And I often ask people like, Oh, so do you ever, you know, do you tend to be the one you're going, we don't have bus stops anymore, really, but, but you're standing on a corner somewhere or in in line or whatever. And someone just, you know, you say hi, whatever. And suddenly someone's telling you their life story. Oh, God, right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they know from your energy, they can, even if they're not conscious of energy, they can yeah. tell, oh, this is a person who will listen. Right. And that it, it, maybe even to the point of saying, well, get me or something, you know. So, I mean, we have that compassion, but also the that energetic connection and people tend to gravitate toward us to to share or to get support or help or or whatever but we have to have good boundaries mm-hmm. so that that doesn't wear us down, yes. but that, you know, that's a real benefit. So we tend to be really good friends and, you know, loyal and, and those kinds of things, which not everybody you know would, would be able to say. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Um, and then, and energy in general, I mean, sometimes it can really, really be draining, but, but we tend to know, you know, what's needed in a situation or you walk in somewhere and go, this doesn't feel right. And you can make a change or you can say, mm, nope, I'm going to wait. Or you get kind of, you know, if it's a premonition, if you want to, you will, but your intuitive side, because we tend to be intuitive. Yeah. Um, we'll say, this doesn't seem like the right, right decision. And then, you know, maybe you find out later, like, oh, I just avoided, you know, something because I was listening to that because I was paying attention to that because I pay attention to everything. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's um, a gift. That is a gift. And for sure. we're good problem solvers mm-hmm. because we do we take in everything and then we process it. We don't just take it in and then go, Oh, well, let's try this or, or whatever, you know, we're like, okay, well, let's consider all of this. Yeah. It tends to take longer because we are going to mull all that over and stuff, but we can see things from different sides. And um, so we can be good negotiators and, you know, leaders and, and things where we, it helps to take everything in to, so that everyone can be equal and get their needs met and all that kind of stuff is Mm -hmm. um, tends to be a real, strong character, which are characteristic. Yeah. And we also tend to usually be pretty creative, mm-hmm. whether that's, you know, like visually artistic or you know, musicians or writers um, or just, you know, having a lot of flowing creativity in whatever your work projects are, you know, that kind of thing or, mm-hmm. or definite benefits. Nice. Well, I yeah. feel more empowered and proud already. <laughs> hey. Um, hey, so yeah, a question I really wanted to ask because uh, most people use the term empath. And then I also hear HSP, highly sensitive, mm-hmm. as not as used as frequently, but they are often used interchangeably. Oh. Are they mm-hmm. the same thing? Yeah, um, in my understanding, with everything that I've read and all the mm-hmm. people I've listened to, and, yeah. and there's there's contradictory answers to that. I mean, if you can listen to a bunch of different people and they'll have different answers. Mm-hmm. In my understanding experience, the difference is the way in which we experience other people's energy. So highly sensitives are going to have, you know, we're going to res- we're going to respond and react to energy in a, in a room or people's energy, whatever, we're going to feel that we're going to have a, a response to that. Mm-hmm. Usually an empath will feel that as though it's their own. Oh, okay. So the boundaries tend to be, I mean, it's one thing you have to really, really work on is that, is this mine or not? 
Mm, um, you know, owning things that are not yours because empaths tend to be very aware, not just aware of people's feelings, but feel them. Mm -hmm. So there's mirroring, like, like you see something on the news and you react to it and you are feeling super sad for somebody that, you know, something happened to. Yeah. Uh, an empath would, would actually like, as if they're experiencing it in, in that moment themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's much more intense, um, that emotional, you know, feeling, cause it's like being there. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, I mean, I, I don't really necessarily consider myself an empath, although I have moments where I'm going, Oh, maybe I should look at that a little bit. You know, I've had things where I, I have like, an, like knee pain, but which I don't, I, it's not my thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, and one day I went running and had to stop and I'm like, Oh, now both of my knees are sore. What, what is that? And it was like debilitating for a few days. I couldn't do anything with my knees. Mm -hmm. This is, this is really weird. And at the same time I had been saying to myself, I have to reach out to so-and-so I have to reach out to so-and-so it's been a long time. So we finally connected after about a week of this. Mm -hmm. And she proceeded to tell me all this stuff about all this, these things she was going through with her knees and she'd not been able to walk. She had to use a walker after the first day and then you know, on and on and on. And I'm yeah. like, really? <laughs> so then as soon as all of that wrapped up and I, I made the connection and my knees were fine. Interesting. So, yeah. Yeah. It was. Um, so sometimes, I mean, we just have to be really clear. So now I'm really good as like, this is weird. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. if it's not normal for me or doesn't resonate, I say, is this mine? You know, is this even... Is this, is this even a thing for me or am I picking this up from somebody or from somewhere? Um, but, but typically, I mean, that, that's my answer on that is this. Okay. That, and actually I do know some empaths, people that would consider themselves empaths mm -hmm. that are not really very high on the sensitivity scale. Otherwise oh, outside of energy okay, and feelings, you know, like environmental stuff or chemical stuff, or, I mean, like a lot of those other things they are like, nah, you know, those things don't, don't bother them. So uh -huh. it's all, again, it's part of that spectrum. It's like super, super, you know, intense sensitivity, mm -hmm. but in this section or this category or, or whatever. So um, yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of overlap. There's so much overlap with, I mean, there's, you know, ADHD and the autism spectrum and, mm -hmm. and then there's sensory processing disorder because high sensitivity is sensory processing sensitivity, which is not a mm -hmm. disorder. Um, okay. But all of those things, you know, have lots of overlap in terms of just, like you said, I mean, everyone's got some kind of sensitivity. Yeah. So it's like, what, where does that manifest? And, you know, is it really global or is it just in one thing or mm -hmm. one arena? Yeah. So. Well, and, and I'm going to say um, back to, you know, feeling other people's stuff, pain. It doesn't even have to be pain. I was going to say pain, but it doesn't have to be pain. Just their, mm -hmm. their, their stuff is, again, a can be a superpower in a way, you know, like mm -hmm. being highly sensitive. In fact, because you're an energy heal, you know, you work with people's energy when you're helping them heal their lives and, and work out stuff. Being able to feel their pain can be beneficial for you as the practitioner, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm the same as a Reiki practitioner. And even when I was in a massage therapist, I, I would get those same type of things like you described. Mm -hmm. It is important then for us to do exactly what you did. Is this mine? You know, it took me a while to realize that too. So again, there's all of these different things or traits about us. As long as, like you said, as, if we can be aware of them, it can help us appreciate and and lift those up. And sometimes, like I said, become almost like a superpower. So right. thank exactly. you for sharing that. That's interesting. I didn't know that about the difference between empath and HSP. So Thank you. I'm yeah. sure and, and some people will say that an empath is just the the very top peg of sensitivity. Mm. But I, I've shifted that just because, like, like I mentioned, you know, mm -hmm. I, I know some who don't don't really have that much heightened. I mean, more than average, you know, yeah. sensitivity on all the other realms other than the energy piece. Nice. Um, hey, so I want to talk about how you help other people before we run out of time, because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> time is just flying by. Uh, no, can't we just keep talking for another I hour? I know, right? <laughs> um, how do you now, so professionally now, you help other highly sensitive people. Yes. How do you help them embrace, like, you know, po and more than what you're doing right now by just helping point out, but how do you actually, mm -hmm. when you're working with someone, help them embrace 
the part, this part of themselves and live healthier, happier lives. Yeah. Um, and everyone comes to me at it from a different, you know, place in their mm-hmm. understanding of high sensitivity. Sometimes yeah. they just discovered it. Sometimes it's been a while, but so sometimes it's, it's somewhat educational, like making sure that they are aware of all of the specifics and exactly what that means. Cause sometimes they'll be like, Oh yeah, I've heard of that. And that's me. And, and then, but say, Oh, well, do you realize that that means this is likely how you process? And they're like, Oh, Okay. So, so, you know, just awareness is, Mm -hmm. is definitely part of it, especially, you know, like what is their experience? Like, okay, this is where, where the high sensitivity piece comes in. Um, So some of that educational piece, but a lot of it is looking at this, the beliefs, the mindset, you know, all of those things that run around in our heads constantly Mm -hmm. that we've developed since we were babies um, that get in our way and, and reframing those. So some of that's just you know, by talking about it, making it aware, but then I use, you know, the EFT tapping yeah. for, for that process um, quite a lot to let go of these things or to, or to refine figuring out where they came from. I mean, that's not as important, but it, it happens in that journey. Like, oh, cause then you're like, okay, well, that, yeah, that makes sense now. Mm-hmm. And then let's release that. Uh, so that, so that it can be um, a, an honoring without all of that negative, like, yeah, but you know, it's, I'm, I'm not worth this or, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a pain in the butt or I'm just, you know, whatever is just not helping getting rid of all of the, making it a, them aware. Yeah. You know, this is what, this is what the self-talk is. And this is, you know, it's usually pretty obvious why this isn't helpful yeah. uh, and how it keeps you locked in these things. And then, so, you know, removing a lot of that. Um, and I, and I always have people do, you know, journaling, and specific exercises for that and a lot of list making and things like that to be aware and keep coming back to. Um, but I also have them, I always, if I'm doing a, a, a program for a while, um, I have people do a, what I call a, a positives journal. What is that? Which is just for people to keep track of everything that is working. We can really get stuck in everything that's not working. Yeah. And we have these expectations of this is where I need to be. And I still have this. So, you know, what? <laughs> But you have a, a thing, a, a way of looking at everything that is working and you say, okay, but we're working on boundaries because that's a big thing, being able to assert boundaries and maintain them mm-hmm. without feeling guilty and dealing with the repercussions when you do that. You know, other people are going to, they're going to balk at that because they have to change behavior. But every time you do that, you know, if you, if you say, okay, I, I, I set this boundary and I, I stuck with it and this happened and it, you know, it worked. You put that in that journal. And then anytime you're having a rough time going, oh my gosh, I can't get out of this. Or this is going to, you know, you pull that journal out and you're going, oh yeah, look at my progress. Look at all the things, you know, with, and, and when you recognize something that, that is a positive trait of, mm-hmm. of that sensitivity piece, put that in there. I mean, you know, anything that's working, anything that's positive about you, you know, so you have that to look at and it's not all just working through all of this this stuff. And, you know, where am I at now? Where am I at? You know, why am I still having, you know, this issue or whatever? And then you look at that and go, oh yeah, wait. Okay. Things are moving and these are good reminders for myself, you know, and some of it is we, we like to learn how to, and I work with people on this too, how to be heard by other people, um, especially if they're not highly sensitive, but we also need to acknowledge that we won't always get that. And people will not get us per se, unless we're with another highly sensitive, they'll be much more likely to go, oh yeah, I've been there or I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, so sometimes we can increase that support, but we're not going to always get it. We're going to have some people that are just, they don't want to take the time. They don't, you know, they can't go there. They won't go there whatever. So being able to be okay with everything themselves, you know, it's like, yeah, you know, someone might not understand this unless I'm talking with another HSP maybe, or you know, just a, a really close friend that's been there a long time. But what's important is that I know this is true about myself or this is important to me or this resonates and it doesn't and being okay with that. So we really um, dive into anything that's getting in the way of that, of that mm-hmm. self-honoring. Yeah. yeah. And you have a psychology degree. Is that correct? I do. Yeah, I do. I had a master's in counseling. I did that initially and oh, okay. you know, way <laughs> before knowing that I was, I mean, I knew I was highly sensitive, but before I, was aware of it as a trait because they were actually uh, Elaine Aaron, who's the, the premier researcher. And, you know, she was doing all of that pretty much the same 
you know, same time that I was completing my master's degree. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing ever discussed about high sensitivity or anything other than like sensory processing disorder probably was mentioned or something. But so I ended up working with trauma survivors, children and and women who had been, you know, domestic violence and physical abuse and sexual abuse. And Mm -hmm. somehow, I mean, thankfully I always had really good self-care practice. Yeah. Which I've, you know, that's maintained and I use that to, I, that's part of what I also work with um, my clients on is building that to cr- decrease that overwhelm. Mm-hmm. So I had some of that, but still at a, at a point I got burned out because it was just, it was intense, but I, you know, I just felt like I could, that's where I would really be, you know, be useful yeah. <laughs> and it was, and it was rewarding, but it was like, oh, well, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I just, it's just too much. And then, and that was hard to let go of. And it was many years later that I became aware of high sensitivity as a trait. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, no wonder. And then I look and, and then I, you know, like pat myself on the back. Like, I don't know how I did that for 12 years. <laughs> right. I mean, really? I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. And I've lost what your actual question was, but. <laughs> no, that was, I was just yeah. curious to see, to hear exactly what you just said. You hmm. actually answered my question without me really even asking it, I think. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> That's good. <Yay>. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, actually, so that brings me to another question then for other people. So, yeah, therapists, like, first of all, I want to say, I think it's amazing that you, because I'm sure that you use what you learned being a counselor Mm, in in the work you do now. I'm sure that there's things you learn. So it just kind of like boosts the help that you give to other people. I'm sure of it. I can just, I I don't know. I just know that for some reason. You might be an empath. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Uh, I, yeah, like my therapist, I believe is a highly sensitive person and she's got amazing, you know, self-care and boundaries mm-hmm. and can tell and what we talk about, but it would be really, it would be difficult. Like you said, it would be probably a little more challenging for those of us that are highly sensitive. So with that in mind and thinking about the last two years, the kind of the reason I changed my whole focus of the podcast, even because things just kind of blew up in the world and, and we're just hit with one thing after another these days. Right. And I know as a highly sensitive person, we are just hit with it a little bit harder, I think. Because yeah, it, it takes a toll. So if you could list some things for those listening, you know, to, to help us with our self care, yes. to, to not let those things bring us into the depths. which go very deep yes (laughs) and i would say even though it's really challenging don't listen to mainstream news okay yes 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 that's that's the biggest one so for me the only information i get is from my sister if it's really really big and i don't know enough about it i will just because she's she's not highly sensitive and she she's constantly got the TV on. She's constantly, you know, it's like she she knows. Mm-hmm. So I'll be like, hey, I heard blah, blah, blah. And then she'll give me a text and be like, OK, I'm good. Otherwise, I listen to NPR once in a while and they have top of the hour, you know, headlines. OK, so just like little recaps. <laughs> yep. And then I'll be like, OK, I'm I think I need to know as much as I need to know. Mm-hmm. If I want to ha- know more then I will search out places to find it. But. Okay. But that one is just, and, and people can feel guilty. Well, I, you know, I should be informed and I should be, you know, whatever. And it's like, yes, but it's going to just dump on you. You know I mean? You're just going to suck it all up and then you're going to hold on to that and feel horrible. And there's nothing you can do directly. Right. Yep. I mean, you can say, okay, what can I do about, oh, well, I can make a donation or I can, you know, share my time doing this or whatever. And then you can act, but you don't have to have that constant input mm-hmm. to, to be a, you know, a good American or, or whatever or of service to other people. Right. Yeah, yeah, pick, okay. pick the way that works for you to be okay. of service mm-hmm. and then go for it, yeah. but don't feel like you need to be everything for everyone and, and just be open to all of that. Cause we're, we're like sponges. We take, yes. you know, everything in and we don't have the same filters. So it's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I always encourage people to do some kind of, and I usually do use the term meditation. Some people don't like it. Some people say that they're not good at it, which is a whole nother topic. Yeah. But some kind of practice where you are making yourself be in the moment only. Mm-hmm. As when we are holding on to past and we're worrying about the future, we're in a fight or flight, freeze, fawn place. Yeah. And, and we can't rest and digest. We can't recover. We can't be who we want to be for the world, for 
our families, for ourselves, Mm -hmm. uh, because we get super depleted. So something that you can be in the moment with, so meditation or um, sometimes for, you know, some people even yoga, um, you can do a walking meditation in nature as long as you're focused on like make it a walking meditation, like focused on your steps and the, what you're hearing and what you're seeing and those kinds of things, rather than just letting your brain go crazy, you know, and problem solving while you're out there, but some kind of in the moment exercise daily that just lets you regroup. And I think it should always include, and I don't like shoulds, but breathing. So even if you, your only um, activity is breathe deep breathing. Awesome. That's the very first thing, because just by breathing deeply, like f- between five and six cycles in and out breaths for in a minute. So 10 seconds or so, five seconds in and out a little bit more, if you can, if you can get it to that level, then your body automatically shifts into the rest and digest. You, you address the vagus nerve and then you, your brain waves change and then you end up actually calming your body because it tells you if you can, if you can breathe slowly and deeply, everything's Okay. That's what your that's the message your body gets. So starting all of that stuff with deep breathing, and that's that's all you have time for is two minutes of deep breathing. Then do that because um, it's so important to just get to that place of everything's okay, and reminding your body so it can let go. Um, and and then you know if you can do it longer, then and it's not so much you have to get your mind to empty, but just to let go of the past and not worry about the future and just just be now. And that's that's huge. Yeah, And actually like Elaine, Aaron, and other people will say highly sensitives really need two hours a day and a full day per week of downtime and alone time to re recharge, which I'm sure you don't know very many people that can accommodate that. <laughs> but hard. if you think about, Oh, if that's the goal, how close can I get to that? You know, can you, can you identify, you know, at least 30 minutes every day where you'd like, okay, it's my time to go have a bath or whatever. Nobody can bother me. And you're, you're somewhere just for that amount of time and you can decompress. So um, that, that kind of stuff is, is super important. And then I think, you know, making sure that you're doing things that feed you, there's all these to do's and musts and, you know, well, I should take care of everybody first and all of that, but recognizing that you need to take care of you, fill your, you know, fill your bucket so that you can serve everybody else, put on your oxygen mask first. I mean, all of those things, Mm -hmm. you know, those, those terms to, yes. To describe that, but it's, it's super important because in our culture, it's still seen, I think as, you know, selfish mm-hmm. to, to take care of yourself first, but eventually you're going to be so depleted that you can't. Yeah. And we're seeing that play out in the yeah. world right now. That's one mm-hmm. of the, I believe that's one of the symptoms of that mindset for so long is yeah. even, and it's happening with people that aren't considered highly sensitive people. It's just, right. I think it's one of the ways it's playing out for sure. Thank you for that. That was always really good. That was really good. That two hour, one day a week thing is amazing. And yeah, you're right. It is probably really difficult for a lot of people to obtain that. But like you said, get as close as you can, like make Mm -hmm. that goal and work towards it. And recognizing it as a need. Yeah. Not a frivolous, selfish thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I'm actually in my mind thinking of all the ways I can do that for myself, for my husband, for my daughter, for my, for my son, even like, yeah. Yeah. And then families, you can, you can schedule like, okay. So as soon as everyone's done with dinner and dishes, whatever, Mm -hmm. it's an hour of whatever special time you want to, you know, it's it's solo time or it's, you know, whatever. And everybody has their own place to be yeah their own activity or non-activity. Yeah. And everyone just gets to be and not interrupt anybody else. Oh, I love so that. Do it as a yeah. family. Yeah, we're me and my my family and I are talking about that tonight. Thank you. For me, Tammy. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, but I do want to make sure and mention that you have an ebook, and it's called the Little Book of High Sensitivity. Can you just kind of give us a few little points what what that's going to look like when someone? Yeah, it'll have a lot of reminders of some stuff that we've talked about okay. here, but you know, kind of explaining, a, a, you know, very briefly what it is in detail. Cause a lot of people are like, Oh yeah, that's me, but they don't really realize it all. So it's got some of that. And then I look at things like energy, how to handle energy and you know, whether it's, yeah, checking in, is this mine or not, but some ideas on that um, and ways to reframe type, you know, any, any kind of those messages and self-care practices, the, all that kind of stuff is in there, the importance of all of that um, and, and how to, um, again, do have that shift of, okay, once you can honor 
but wait, there's, there's benefits, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, so there's, there's some of that in there too, as, as well um, in terms of learning how this can be your superpower. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you go through all of these things and acknowledge all of this, and then this, these are the ways to look at it from here and, and go forward so that it's something to honor and not to just get through, you know? Right. So for me, it's always that surviving to thriving idea. Yeah. Love yeah. it. And then there's, you have, you also have a guide for highly sensitive to commute sensitives to communicate with non HSPs on your, yes. um, that link is on your website as well. Um, yeah, it's on my link okay. tree. Link yeah. Tree. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. I will put those links in the show notes for people to grab and enjoy and use to go from surviving to thriving. Uh, awesome. Is there anything else you want to add before we say goodbye? It's so important to just acknowledge we are wired this way. Mm-hmm. So it's nothing you need to change. So hopefully if that's anybody's goal, how do I get to not be highly sensitive? Cause I've heard that. Yes. That's not going to happen. You are wired that way. Your brain is actually different. That's who you are. So you can develop tools to decrease the overwhelm. You can learn how to share with other people. You can set boundaries. You can do all these things to make it work mm-hmm. and then make it your superpower. But hopefully everyone can let go of that idea that I need to change myself because we can hear that from other people, you know, Oh, get yourself fixed. And then, you know, then get back with me. (laughs) And it's, it's not that we don't have to change. We just, I mean, any more than anybody. I mean, we, it's a constant, you know, evolution as we do self growth, but we don't have to stop being highly sensitive. Mm. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you for affirming that. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Oh, reminder. It's a good thing to put out a little sticky note. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you so, so much. I already feel You're better. So and I know people listening great. are going to feel the same way. So thank you. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Our stories may be different, but we all have one thing in common. We're all trying to figure out how to navigate life on this planet. And none of us have it completely figured out. No matter what you're going through in your life, just know that you are never really alone. Come back every Wednesday for more inspiration and connection. And follow me on Instagram at the Dragonfly Mama so we can stay in touch between episodes.